Today I want to talk with you about something that's actually a very common phenomena that many of us experience at some point in our lives, and, and that's of uh, stagnation, and in some instances even burnout. And a man showed up in my classes recently that he was describing the work that he does and basically the fact that he really hates his job and having a lot to do with it taking up so many hours of the day that he's doing something that he doesn't enjoy he's having to work with people that he really doesn't like and in addition to that he's commuting to work from the outer boroughs it's an eight hour commute ah, it's a one hour commute and an additional hour commute all the way back home in the evening. So by the time he gets home, after that long day of work, it just it has consumed so much of his time that he, it doesn't give him any time to do the things that he really loves, you know, the things that he really wants to do with his life. And, and there's a lot of resentment over that fact. And, and as he was sitting in my class and I had him bring to his awareness the whole work setting, imagine himself there and really feel how he feels deep within his body. As he described it, it was very hellish. And he just, you know, he had spent so much time just disconnecting from what he was feeling that he he possessed very little awareness of his own body. He was kind of dissociating a bit. And after the class, when I looked into his aura, it actually appeared to be uh, very stagnant. There was a huge amount of stagnation all throughout his chest and his abdomen. I could see it throughout much of his back. And you know, we have different aspects of our body-mind consciousness. You know, there's a, we have obviously the physical body, but there's a, a cognitive intellectual aspect, but we also have a part of our consciousness that's very feeling-oriented, you know, through which we experience our emotions. And we all have the experience of happening upon somebody who was very angry for instance, and without them saying a word, we could feel this, um, that anger just radiating or emanating from their body. And sometimes it could be very threatening. And the reason why we feel that is because emotions have a substance to them. So you know, when we think about the individual I'm describing, and, and it may apply to yourselves, some of you as well, that you know, if you're working in a job and it's something that you really don't want to do and you're there for, what, um, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten hours a day and it's, you're just doing what you have to do in order to survive, to pay the bills. And <clears throat> all that time you're sitting there, it's eliciting these like very heavy, um, uncomfortable emotions and, and what happens is what you're feeling on an emotional level it's like these feelings if you're not digesting them they they end up getting trapped within the body problem is when you're doing something on an ongoing basis that you really dislike and it continues to elicit the same types of feelings no you're not going to process that it's just going to continue to build up within your body that makes for a real challenge because it can be very, very deadening to our consciousness. Now, when we come into this world, there's this tremendous generative uh, force moving within us that moves us from one cycle to the next to the next in, in our process of maturation or development and so you see children with this amazing resilience and life about them that's one of the reasons why children are so attractive you know and we um, we like to, to see them and be around them but 
we, a lot of this carries over into our adolescence, into our adulthood, early adulthood, and then as time goes on, there's, there's a slowing down. Not all of it is age-related, though. Um, part of the reason why children are so resilient is because they just do not carry quite so much emotional baggage. You know, they haven't experienced so many hurts and losses and setbacks and disappointments. And, and so it's because of that, there's just a lot more life and freedom within their body. You know, they have, um, they don't yet have that sense that of limitation that they can't do certain things. Like, you know, as I think back to when I was 17, and I'd heard about the traditional Native American doctors when, um, back when I was 14, and, and I knew, you know, that I wanted to live among the Native people and actually apprentice from one of the traditional doctors. And so I took off at 17, and my car didn't make it as far as Arizona, where I had intended to go, but um, it, fortunately it died there in Oklahoma and I found myself living among the Kiowa people with whom I resonated. And, and I ended up apprenticing from one of the last surviving traditional doctors among the Kiowa tribe. I was very fortunate that he passed on portions of his own healing power to me. <clears throat> I very much loved and resonated with the native people there. And would have been content to live among them for the remainder of my life, but as the older generations were dying out, there was, um, things were really taking a turn for the worse. There are more progressive native communities that are, a um, lot of, of good things are happening, but the community I lived in, the alcoholism was just getting more and more out of control. There was a lot of violence. I just didn't see any option except to return back to mainstream society, which was a huge culture shock for me. I just, it just felt very foreign to me. You know, people just could not conceive of the kinds of experiences that I've had all that time and just, you know, it, it made it really difficult. and. I still, you know, wanted very much to to practice what I had learned from my mentor, this traditional native doctor. But many people were not at all familiar with the types of healing gifts that the native indigenous people possessed. And some were even a little frightened or intimidated by the intensity of the power of these kinds of healing gifts. And so I ran into challenges or difficulties that I never, ever anticipated. You know, I'd see my mentor, you know, and the Native people, they understood him, who he was and what he had to offer. And so they would just line up, you know, we'd come into Oklahoma, come back from New Mexico, and people were lined up waiting to see him. He couldn't even keep a telephone because the number would get out and it would be ringing off the hook. <clears throat> but as I came into this culture, and I would see people with conditions that normally respond very well to this type of healing, anything from digestive and respiratory disorders, heart disease, stroke, anxiety, depression, people going through breakups and divorces, and a, a lot of these things are just so easy. You know, from my standpoint, they're very easy to work with, and, and they respond very, very well to this type of healing. But, you know, you have people that, you know, if it's not part of their belief system, if they have some kind of religious something, you know, that, you know, closes their mind to other possibilities, or, or they just don't know what it is, a lot of times they don't respond. And so I see people that could very well heal, and sometimes, you know, they just, they don't recognize or respond to their opportunities. And a lot of times they just continue to suffer unnecessarily. But for me, it was difficult because it was um, evoking a lot of sadness and disappointment, a lot of heaviness, and just, you know, the, the, the strain and struggle of even trying to convince people, you know, that, hey, just, just try this, you know, and see what it's going to do for you. And, 
And those emotions were, were building up inside of me. And so there's just all this heaviness and sadness and, you know, sometimes a feeling of just resignation or just, just wanting to give up, you know. But, you know, I discovered that <clears throat> as I, by acknowledging the situation for what it was and the interactions I was having with certain individuals, if I can bring my awareness, fully bring my awareness to what I was feeling, all the feelings and sensations within my body, and <clears throat> to center my awareness in those feelings and sensations and begin to breathe very softly and very deeply and follow the feelings and sensations as they go through their progression. And this really takes time. In many instances I'd be having to return to the same sets of feelings. I'd sit with them for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, an hour or more, and I'd be doing this day after day, and I'd come back and I'd be following a lot of the same, working with the same issues and sets of feelings for sometimes weeks and months. But as I kept doing so, a lot of that heaviness and stagnation began to break apart. And, and I could begin to feel movement within, sort of a, a renewal. And, it, by processing through a lot of the sadness and disappointment, it just made it easier to let go of, you know, those people that were just not able to recognize and respond to the opportunities being presented to them. And, <clears throat> you know, if work was a little slow at times, well, there are other things I could work on, you know, like making videos or working on my writing or um, even setting up and doing classes so that I could reach more of the people who are responsive, who recognize and embrace their opportunities. So, um, <clears throat> stagnation comes in many, many forms, though. There's, you know, I see people, they've gone through a lot of hurt and disappointment in their relationships. You know, there's, there's so much flakiness these days where, you know, people seem to be interested in you know, they show up for a little while, then they just disappear. And there's, there's times where, um, you know, we do get involved for a while, but there's, people just change, you know, even, even if the relationship is, appears to be very successful and there is that love and commitment for a period of time. You know, I often see where, you know, eventually one or both partners change and, and, <clears throat> And then there's just this void, you know, where there was once love, now there's this empty void and, and there's no longer a, um, uh, that love and passion that there used to be. And other times I, I see people that, you know, they were, they were really very much into the work they were doing, they were very passionate about it for some period of time. But as, as the years went by, they eventually lost that passion for what it is they're doing. It's, it's like what will happen is that there are these cycles in our lives, and cycles can involve relationships, it can involve you know, where we live and the cultures we live among, it could involve our work. And it's like we move through these cycles, and a lot of times when these cycles come to completion, there's... It, it's like there's this emptiness or void. And there are instances where I will look into people's auras and I, I could see, you know, where <clears throat> there's, you know, the person was really thriving at some point in their life. And, but now as I'm looking into their aura, it's, it's like there's all this old structure, you know, that once supported them in the life that they were living before in the relationship with their former partner or spouse or when they were raising their children or when they were you know, really successful in a certain um, segment of their career at some time. And here's that old structure, but it has nothing to do. And the old structure that's still present in their aura has nothing to do with the life that they're living now. And then there's this just huge empty hole, you know, like this void and this flatness when I look into their aura no real spark, no real enthusiasm. And, you know, if, when that's the case, it's still, 
it's, it's still a very valuable practice, you know, to bring your awareness, just acknowledge where things are at now. You know, the fact that here you are, you know, at this stage in your life and you don't really know where to go or what to do and, and there's maybe this heaviness or emptiness or flatness. Um, <clears throat> and, and begin to breathe with that. Doing so, what, what I find that happens is it it's begins to, to break up that, that deadness, that um, there's, there's a, a crack in that shell and, and there's a, <clears throat> more of that aliveness begins to come back through, you know, that you begin to reconnect with that essence that gives you a sense of um, purpose or direction. Can you do the healing all on your own? Uh, probably not. You know, we all need some form of intervention. You know, it's, <clears throat> we're very complex beings and <clears throat> sometimes it's, it's difficult to, to process all the, the stresses that we accumulate within our bodies. I would definitely recommend that you do deep tissue body work because you, know, you think of the, the stresses or challenges that you encounter over the course of a day or a week multiplied by all the days, weeks, and months, and years. And a large amount of that never really gets processed and much of it is just um, contained with, throughout the body, you know, within all the, the various organs and the tissues throughout the musculature. And so if you're receiving deep tissue body work, it helps to break apart a lot of the stagnation. And it, it does bring a lot of this emotion to the surface. It may not feel comfortable, but when you work with the practice that I'm describing in, conju in conjunction with the body work, that helps you to process a lot of these heavy, stagnant emotional energies. It helps to keep you more fluid, vital, and alive. Now, Having trained with a traditional Native American doctor, um, one of the major aspects of our training involves going alone into the mountains to fast for four days and nights without food or water. It's called the vision quest. And during the vision quest, you know, I'll, I'll feel this force or presence. It's like various beings come to me and begin to move into my body. At times it would feel like a near-death experience with portions of my life beginning to flash through my awareness. Early on it was a lot of the um, really stressful, traumatic events that I had experienced throughout my childhood and adolescence. Um, themes of betrayal and abandonment. But in more recent years it has dealt a lot more with the stresses pertaining to, you know, what I'm encountering in my present day life. And, you know, it amazes me because it's, it's really shown me that we really only experience a very small portion of our total awareness. You know, much of the, even our, much of our own emotional response resides outside of our conscious awareness. Like, as I would be on the vision quest, I would actually end up reliving some of the um, challenging or difficult, stressful situations and the interactions that I've had with um, various individuals. And as I'd be reliving these experiences, I would um, re-experience the, the actual sequence of events and the, the emotions attached to them. And in many instances, they would be that much more vivid than they were at the time they happened. And so that was really sh showing me that, you know, there was, there was so much emotion and, you know, feeling, sensation that never even registered within my conscious awareness at the time that I actually went through these circumstances or events. And <clears throat> I'd go through the vision quest and, you know, there would be this, this profound sense of, lightening up, you know, it'd be like as though so much of the, the heaviness that I had carried for all the, um, for those months prior, you know, the difficulties and struggles and um, sometimes hurts and disappointments, you know, so much of that would have worked through me and that I would feel just this profound sense of renewal, more enthusiasm. And I, I would find it's, it's like doing this upgrade 
you know, because I would have more resources, I'd be that much more capable, uh, <clears throat> more, have more appropriate, more adaptive, more resourceful ways of responding to people and circumstances, and better able to um, recognize and embrace my own opportunities. Now, Vision Quest is by far a little too intense for most people. Um, but, you know, there, um, <clears throat> even if, you know, a few of you may have the, um, the kind of resilience and the, the discipline, you know, if you work really hard and willing to do the intensive practice, it's something you could build up to. But, you know, for most people, if you have the opportunity to work with a gifted healer such as myself, like, I'll work with people, for instance, where maybe they've gone through the painful breakup or divorce, and there's a lot of sadness and hurt, and that's just, you know, sitting, much of it's contained within the chest. It could be in different, various parts of the body, but especially around the heart. And even many instances, six months, a year, two years, five or longer, you know, many people never fully heal from or process the loss of love. And so in the course of working with people who have experienced these losses, it's taking all this like heavy, congealed, painful emotion and it's begun to um, transform it uh, so that what was thick, heavy, congealed becomes lighter, becomes more fluid so that the individual I'm working with can be is able to digest that whole experience of loss and all the subsequent emotions. And with that, there's a, a bouncing back, there's a becoming more resilient, uh, uh, again, an opening of the heart and a greater capacity to, to be present within the context of a relationship, to love and to be loved. Working with people that have maybe they're in, stuck in some kind of a, deadening and unfulfilling life circumstance or situation. It could be a really toxic relationship or a job that just doesn't fulfill them. As I work with people and they keep processing through more and more and more of these stagnant layers of emotion and they become lighter and freer. There's more, that life force just builds within the body. There's a stronger connection to that authentic inner core stronger connection to the deeper instinctual mind and to the higher power. And so there's just this strong body sense, body intelligence, this knowing deep within in terms of like, wow, this is my purpose. This is what I need to be doing. And with that, there's the development of the resources, the capacities um, that the individual needs in order to really uh, fulfill their purpose. Even working with people, maybe that um, somebody who you know was in the relationship and now there there's this empty void because they're just on their own. Maybe their their children have grown up and now it's time to rediscover themselves and get a sense of like, well, what what's the life I need to live now? Somebody who was successful in their career and they've it's like they just ran out of gas and they were just like flatlining for quite some time. And so in, in working with these individuals, it, it's like breaking down a lot of the old stagnant structure that no longer serves them, building new foundation and reawakening a lot of these passions, you know, so that there's, you know, again, there's a, this, this deeper visceral body sense of like, wow, you know, this is what I need to do and, you know, feeling connected to this deeper instinctual nature, having the clear sense of like um, what your needs are and, <clears throat> and your needs are connected to your purpose and, you know, things begin to fall into place. I see people leave stagnant, toxic relationships, leave jobs that are unfulfilling, get a clear sense of where they need to be, of the work that they need to be doing um, many times, as they let go of unhealthy people, they end up meeting somebody who's a much better match for them. So, <clears throat> in the course of working with people, 
one of the things I notice is, is that, you know, as the years go by and with all the stresses and the difficulties and the hardships, whatever that we don't process or digest, all that emotion that, that we feel in response to what's taking place in our life, it's like what we don't digest just accumulates and it just builds this, this deadness or stagnation within our bodies. But as we work, you know, again, there's this whole process of transformation of that heavy, stagnant emotional energy. The more that process is, it's like the lighter, the more fluid you become. And there's just more of that sense of connectedness. And, and there are times, you know, just, you know, as I'm able to work with people over extended periods of time, you know, that I just watch how people become just much much more lifeful and resilient. They start developing those that that fresh kind of aliveness that you do see, you know, within children and adolescents and young adults. You know, there's that whole sense of renewal that comes about. So, uh, if I can be of assistance in any way, do feel free to reach out to me. And again, you know, work with the practices and um, do the body work if. And if you have an opportunity to work with someone such as myself, um, jump at the opportunity because there's, there's so much more for you ahead in life as you do so.